Alrighty guys, we are back for episode eight and it, it is a None of that shit. Um, just gonna be me. We're playing a one, two, 500 cap house game. Very similar to episode two. A lot of the same players actually and same location. So check out episode two if you haven't. That was probably our, uh, or my one good win of this fucking vlog. Yeah, it's gonna be a splashy game because these guys get out of line quite a lot and gonna put me in some tough spots. Hopefully run it up. But yeah, just a solo vlog for this one. Let's run it up, guys. I haven't booked a good win in a while, and you guys are probably thinking I'm trash at this point. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys. For this entire session, we are going to be six-handed. The first hand we look down at is pocket nines under the gun plus two. I open to $10. The hijack calls and the button now three bets to $45. Big blind calls, and I also decide to make the call just as deep as we are. I'm looking to set mine with a hand like this, and the hijack also tags along with the good price given. Flop is pretty good for us, 642 rainbow, we flop an overpair. Weird situation though when the big blind leads for $50. Uh, just a weird spot overall for me, as I don't know what to do with the aggressor to act behind. The guy donk leading usually does this with weak hands, so I decide to just call, but honestly don't feel great about the situation with the aggressor to act behind. Hijack folds, and now what we fear happens, the button raises to 175. He's pretty much repping an overpair here on this disconnected board that doesn't really hit a 3 betters range. So when the big blind folds, which I expected, I'm now in a shitty spot. I'm almost certain he has an overpair here, so I think a fold is pretty clear. Not sure what I should have done, so let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Should I have folded, raised the donk lead? I'm not sure. Let me know. All right, guys, let's get back on the right track. Our next hand is an absolute premium. We pick up pocket queens in the big blind. The cutoff opens to $14, folds to me. I have a beautiful hand, so I'm going to 3-bet this one to $50 out of position. It gets back to the cutoff, who now 4-bets to 130 With this sizing, I'm feeling pretty shitty, honestly, out of position. His range is looking pretty strong here when the big blind 3-bets him and he 4-bets. So, not feeling too great about the situation, and don't think I should necessarily put a 5-bet in, because I'd just be committing my stack here. I think I'm a little bit too deep for that, so I decide to just call here. We are heads up in a 4-bet pot to a flop of Queen-10-6 Rainbow. We flop the absolute nuts in a 4-bet pot against someone who likely has an overpair. I checked the aggressor and he bets $75. We're loving the situation and I think I should just make the call here. Raising would be pretty stupid holding the nuts and I'm not too worried about any cards coming besides maybe a jack, ace, or king. So we make the call. Turn is super safe. A 5 of spades bringing in a spade draw now. I check again to the aggressor. He takes the bait and jams immediately. We snap it off. I tell him we're running it once. We're coming out for blood here, and we hold against aces. Super nice to finally be on the good side of a cooler and take this big pot down. We're feeling good, guys, and we're hoping to keep running hot, so this next hand, we look down at ace-jack off and under the gun plus two. There's a $4 straddle on, so we open to $15. Only the straddle makes the call. Heads up to a flop of 965 with two diamonds. We decide to c-bet $25, but in hindsight, I think I should check here as I'm not holding any diamonds in my hand. He pretty quickly calls. The turn is another 9, which isn't a really good card. I slow down and now check, trying to get to showdown cheaply with ace high or maybe bank a river. He now bets $40, and again, we make another mistake. I convince myself to call because this guy can get splashy, when I should probably just fold and look for a better spot here. River is a double board pairing 5. So now we're chopping with any ace, but... I honestly don't really think he has an ace here. I'm thinking he has some sort of pair or maybe even a full house. I check to him and he continues and bets $60. Really small sizing. Uh, looks like he's just trying to squeak out value from ace high at this point. So I honestly would have preferred a bigger bet. It would have made me more inclined to call. With this bet sizing, I just decided to make the fold and he tells us later that he had a better two pair than what was on the board. So good fold by us, but bad plays both on the flop and on the turn. After that hand, we decide to add on for another 300 because these fools keep double straddling and even triple straddling to $16. And we are not trying to play tournament poker here. We want to be at least 100 big blinds deep. So let's get back on the right track. 
The next hand we pick up is ace queen of clubs in under the gun plus two. I open to $10, the small blind calls, and the big blind makes the call. Three ways to a flop of jack three two with two clubs, so a pretty good flop for us. Small blind checks, and now the big blind donk leads for $25. Seems to be a common theme in these games, people donk leading, so I decided to just make the call because this guy is probably not too strong and just realize all my equity with my overcards and flush draw. The small blind pretty quickly makes the fold, so we are heads up to a turn, which is absolutely gin, the king of clubs. We immediately get there with the nuts against the infamous donk leader. He bets again for $55. At this point, I'm pretty much putting him on a jack or a weak pair. I decided to just make the call to give him some rope and let him bluff the river. And the river is a perfect card for what we're putting him on, the jack of diamonds. Surprisingly though, he checks here. So at this point, I'm either thinking he has a jack or a pair. So betting small here, I think he'd fold any pair. And betting big would probably look more polarized for me and it would target his jack X holdings a lot better. So I decide to put out a pretty big bet of $200 and this man goes into the tank for minutes on end. Fast forward a little bit and unfortunately he decides to make the fold, not what we wanted. And this player later tells us that he had a jack. So pretty unfortunate that he made the fold here. A great fold if he's telling the truth. Just gonna have to move on and hopefully win some more hands. After that sweaty one against our buddy Oren, we look down at ace king offsuit in the hijack. I open to $10, the low jack calls, and now the button makes a huge raise to $80. The small blind now cold calls the $80, and I'm in a weird position because this was a pretty big raise from the button. I decide to four bet this one to $280, trying to isolate and go heads up with the button. The button now folds, and now the small blind surprisingly calls. So a super, super strange development. I'm putting the small blind on some suited aces, suited Broadway, or maybe even tens jacks at the max. Anyways, we're heads up to a pretty huge pot, which comes out spectacular. King Jack five with two hearts. He checks to me. I decide to bet 325 and he pretty quickly calls. Doesn't really think about it. Turn is a safe one, the four of spades. He checks to me again. At this point, I have a little less than a pot size bet left given the effective stacks. I think this guy has maybe 800 left. So I decide to get max value from all his ace 10 or ace queen holdings and put a lot of pressure on flush draws. And he snap folds and shows ace 10 offsuit. So not really sure what happened there. He called out of position twice with ace 10 offsuit to a three bet and then a four bet and then called a flop bet with a gutter. But we're happy to take this one down and just happy that he didn't hit that shit. So on to the next. The next hand we pick up is pocket queens again in the hijack. There's a four dollar straddle on which seems to be a trend in this game. I open it up to $16 in the small blind and straddler make the call. Three ways to a flop of king nine eight rainbow. It checks to me and I bet $30. Not sure if I should be checking this all the time, but I think a bet or check is fine. The straddler folds and the small blind makes the call. Turn is a six of spades, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. He checks to me again and I decide to check back for some pot control. Not sure if this is a good play. If I'm gonna be C betting the flop, maybe should keep up with the aggression and rep those over pairs, sets, and king x holdings. But as played, we check back. River is a jack of spades now completing the backdoor flush. So now he leads for $35. Pretty small sizing and it's looking pretty value heavy. I decide to make the fold and he actually shows 10-7 offsuit. So he got there with the straight. Pretty stupid that he got there with 10-7, but it is what it is. We're on to the next. All right, guys, unfortunately for this one, no video footage as my phone ran out of battery, but thought I needed to share it as it's a pretty big one and a super sticky spot. We open the action up to $16 with a $4 straddle out there in the low jack. It gets to our buddy Oren on the button and he three bets to $50. At this point in the night, we're actually only five handed. So if it was a full ring table, I'd probably just fold and look for a better spot in position with a hand like this. But given the table dynamics and how splashy Oren is, I'm gonna make the call. 
Heads up to a flop of Queen Jack 6 with two diamonds and one club. We do not hold any of those suits, so I check to him and he continues for $40. Think this is a pretty straightforward call. Our hand is pretty strong right now, so we're gonna continue with a call and tread cautiously. The turn is an interesting card, the four of clubs. So now there are two flush draws on board. I'm gonna just continue the same type of play and check to him to see what he does. And he decides to bet again for a pretty big sizing, 125. At this point, I'm putting him on some sort of straight draw or flush draw as there is so much out there. So I think my hand is under repped at this point and too strong to fold. So we decide to make the call and look for a clean river. The river is as clean as we can ask for with the deuce of hearts. All the flush draws brick, all the straight draws brick. And at this point, I'm gonna just check to him and see what he decides to do and he immediately jams all in for $220. A really tough spot because he's pretty much saying that he missed his draws or he's repping some sort of overpair, maybe a two pair like Queen Jack or a flop set. Given how little he's repping that actually beats our hand and how many draws missed, I actually am leaning towards more of a call, but our good friend Oren decides to talk up a storm, so he starts saying dead on what we have. He's like, you probably have King Queen, huh? And I immediately tell him, yeah, I do. It's a tough spot of the night. And he says, flip a coin. And once he says that, I pretty much just convince myself I'm going to make this call and pay him off if he has it. And we get the good news that it's the right call. We take this pretty big pot down off camera, and that is it for this one. All right, what's up, everybody? Editing Tyler here. Luke forgot to record an outro for this session because he's a dumbass. But anyway, for this session, he ended up booking a win of $1,300. Might be the biggest win of the vlog. Not sure, but at least somebody's winning in the vlog. I'll be in the next one for sure. But anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And we'll see you guys, hopefully both of us, in the next one.